Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to do a chi-square test of independence. I'm calling in our course, we call this lecture 20 for chi-square, and this is the second type of chi-square called the test of independence, and we're going to see if there's a relationship between two variables. That would be the alternative hypothesis, and the null would be that there is no relationship. So what we're going to do is we're going to, in the previous video, we looked at whether or not there was an equal percentage of the population who supported the death penalty. So we have a variable that we need two nominal variables here. So this is a nominal variable that you either support or oppose it. And we're going to see if there's a relationship to gender. Okay, so we have a, another nominal variable. So the null hypothesis is that there's no relationship. These two variables are independent of each other. And then the alternative hypothesis is that there is a relationship where they are dependent on each other. In the United States, generally speaking, there is a relationship with more males supporting the death penalty than females. Okay, I'm sorry my mouse is acting up. I don't know why that is. Okay, so we would go analyze descriptive statistics, cross tabs. Okay, I'm sorry. I was practicing, so I got this right. So we're going to move over our variables. My friend says it matters which one. You get the same output, so I don't think it matters. So we're going to look at whether or not you support the death penalty and gender. Okay, move those either or your two variables go in one of these. Press statistics, choose chi square, continue. Go to here to cells. We want observed and expected. Recall that um, one of the things that you can, if you have a small data set, you might um, violate an assumption that you need your expected counts to be at least five. So press continue and then OK. Okay, here's your observed and expected counts, or you can see this. I create this for you in the, the text lecture. But here is our test ratio value in step six, and here's our p-value, 0.001. That's less than 0.05. We would reject the null. Step six would tell us to reject the null. This is the probability of error. So we would reject the null and say that there is a relationship between these two variables. I made up these data. Um, Actually, I kind of did it weird. So there's a lot more men that support it. So there's 29 men, 26 support, only three oppose, whereas females, it's a little bit more equal. Okay, so I made up these data. So we have a significant relationship. Remember I said you need to pay attention to whether or not you would violate this assumption. Everybody will have this. It'll either tell you that you do or not. This says zero cells have expected counts less than five, so you don't violate this. If you did violate it, you would see that pop up and it would tell you how many cells. So usually at the end of a problem, I'll tell you, tell, I will ask you to tell me what you violated. Okay, so you'd have to pay attention to that. Remember, everybody will violate random sample, um, and you'll need to pay attention with that if you have a small data set, um, with a small n, excuse me. I'm going to show you what that would look like real quickly, and I'm going to use variables that don't really make a whole lot of sense, but I just want to do it real quickly. So we go analyze, descriptive statistics, sorry, descriptive statistics, my mouse is <laughs> making me angry. Cross tabs, we'll do pro tour, and the other pro tour. Statistics is chi square. Okay, cells expected. Okay, so this should violate that assumption. Ooh, what happened? Yeah, see right here, it says four cells have expected counts of less than five. So that's how you know if you violated it. Okay, so I just did it twice, so I'm not going to repeat it again for you. So that's the end of the video. how to do a test of independence for chi-square using SPSS.